at Casablanca's well-guarded Anfa Hotel, the United States and British missions meet. The Garons are an armed camp. Only official Army and Navy cameramen are permitted to photograph the history-making event. Beneath the guns of sentries on the rooftop, the high commanders of Britain and America plan for victory. In August 1941, President and Prime Minister met at sea to sign the Atlantic Charter. Today, they meet in Africa to give the world a new charter, a final plan for final victory. Time was when Hitler and Mussolini met in armored trains and all Europe trembled. Now, Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill have turned the tables. Today, they meet to dictate the terms. Today, they plan the offensive. While an umbrella of fighting planes is on constant patrol overhead, Discussions of ways and means for victory go on behind closed doors. High British and American Air, Army and Navy staffs talk face to face across the conference table. Head of the British and American Air Forces, Sir Charles Portal and General Arnold. Admirals of the British and American fleets, Sir Dudley Pound and Admiral King. Chiefs of the British and American staffs, Sir Alan Brooke and General Marshall. At the American cemetery at Fort Leote near Rabah, the President's party pauses to honor United States soldiers who fell in Morocco. A salute to the men who gave their lives to prevent further bloodshed. Here, close by the Atlantic, they lie beneath the flag of their country, heroes in the cause of the United Nations. For the first time, General Giraud meets President Roosevelt. Successor to Darlot as High Commissioner of French Africa, Giraud is one Frenchman who refused to bow to the Nazis. Twice he has escaped from German prisons. His talks with President Roosevelt are clearing the way for complete French-African collaboration with the United Nations. The meeting of General Giraud and General de Gaulle with President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill is one of the dramatic moments of the conference. Charles de Gaulle, leader of the fighting French. Henri Giraud, hero of the French army. Personal friends, Giraud and de Gaulle join hands. Their one goal, the liberation of France, the defeat of the enemy. Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill reveal their big story to the press. War correspondents secretly flown in from the African battlefront, from England, from America, hear news that re-echoes in Moscow, in Chongqing, in Ankara, and more important, in Berlin, in Rome, and in Tokyo. Homeward bound by Army Air Transport, the President's next stop is the tiny African Republic of Liberia. Here, American Negro troops are helping guard the coastline of this friendly little nation. Again, riding in a scout car, as guest of President Barclay of Liberia, President Roosevelt sees more smartly equipped United States fighters pass in review. American soldiers protecting another outpost of the United Nations. The presidential plane recrosses the Atlantic to South America. Here, President Roosevelt meets Getulio Vargas, President of Brazil. He assures President Vargas that the west coast of Africa will never again be a threat to the Americas. The Casablanca meeting is history. What Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill planned for 1943 is a military secret. But for the Axis, those plans mean but one thing, unconditional surrender.